In this video, I'm going to talk about electrolyte and what is a strong electrolyte, what is weak electrolyte, and what is non-electrolyte. What is electrolyte? Electrolyte is a compound that can dissolve in water and after that dissociate to the ions, positive and negative. This ion can freely move in the solution and it can transfer electric current easily. So the electrolyte solution conducting electricity. But let's see what type of compound they can uh, be electrolyte and what type of compound they are not electrolyte. I'm going to start with sodium chloride. We all know that sodium chloride is soluble in water, but when we dissolve sodium chloride in water, it dissociated to the cation and anions in the water solution. So sodium chloride convert to sodium positive cation and chloride anion. So existing these ions will cause the conductivity of AQ solution of sodium chloride. Here is another example. Calcium chloride AQ solution will produce calcium 2 plus and 2 of chloride anion. So calcium chloride also is an electrolyte. So the best source for finding ions, of course, is ionic compound. But there are some ionic compounds, they are not soluble in water. So when they are not soluble in water, of course, they cannot dissociate it to their cation and anion. So how we should predict if our ionic compound is soluble in water or not? We should take a look to the solubility chart. So this is the solubility chart. And as you can see, there is two different parts. The first part, it is for soluble compound. So we can see some rules for solubility. Also, there are some exceptions. For example, ammonium cation, they are always soluble. So if you have an ionic compound with ammonium cation, it's always soluble in water. Nitrate anion is always soluble. There is no exception. Acetate anion, they are always soluble. In addition of that, whenever you see elements for group one of periodic table, like lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on. They are always soluble. And of course, for some anion like sulfate and like chloride, bromide, and iodide, there are some exceptions. You can see that. Like sulfate is always soluble except for calcium, strontium, barium, mercury one, and lead two. So whenever we have an ionic compound, we should double check with solubility chart to make sure if our compound is soluble or not. So what happens if our compound is not soluble? So let's say we want to use AgCl, silver chloride. Silver chloride is not soluble regarding the solubility rules here. Silver chloride is exceptions. So AgCl doesn't dissolve in water, but the solubility of AgCl or other insoluble ionic compound, it is very low. It's not zero. Because it's very low, still they're going to produce a little bit ions in water solutions. But this amount of ion is not too much to make a very strong electrolyte. So solution will be conductive, but the conductivity is a lot lower than regular ionic compound. So actually, there is three different categories for electrolyte. A strong, weak, and non-electrolyte. Right now, we know what is a strong electrolyte and what is weak electrolyte. But in addition of ionic compound, there are some molecular compounds. They can be a strong or weak electrolyte. Here is the first example. HBr is a molecule. We don't have any cation and anion for this molecule. But when it dissolves in water, it reacts with water and it's producing H3O positive and Br negative. So basically, HBr donating one proton or one hydrogen to water and it dissociates to hydronium cation and bromide anion. HBr or hydrobromic acid will dissociate 100% during this process. So Whenever we have solution of HBr, it's going to be a strong electrolyte. But how we should know which molecule can be strong, which molecule can be weak? 
there are six strong acids. They always dissociate 100% and they are a strong electrolyte. We should memorize their name and their formula. HCl, HBr, HI, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. HNO3, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and perchloric acid. Solution of these six acids in water is always produce a strong electrolyte. If we have any other acid like HNO2, like phosphoric acid, like sulfurous acid, like acetic acid or vinegar, they are always weak. So only six acids are a strong electrolyte. The rest of acids are weak electrolyte. But we would like to know what happens when these acids dissolve in water, where they are not a strong electrolyte. Because, for example, when we have solution of nitrous acid, this process is reversibly, and only a part of molecule will dissociate. Sometimes this part of molecule in weak acid is less than 1% even. So the amount of ions in the solution is not comparable with a strong acid or regular ionic compound. So when we have solution of this acid, we have weak electrolyte. In addition of acids, there are some molecules like ammonia. Ammonia is a base and ammonia solution, it produces NH4, ammonium cation and hydroxide anion. This dissociation for ammonia is less than 5%. So we don't have too many ions in our solution. So ammonia also is a weak electrolyte. So to having a strong electrolyte, we should have soluble ionic compound or we should have a strong acid. And the last part, what is non-electrolyte compound? There are a lot of compounds like glucose, sugar, Glucose dissolve in water easily, but it will not dissociate during this process. So the solution of glucose, it doesn't have any conductivity. So it's non-electrolyte. Here is another example, alcohol, ethanol. When we add alcohol to water and make a solution of alcohol, the alcohol remain unchanged after the solution in water. So alcohol is also a non-electrolyte and its solution doesn't have any conductivity. Let's see what type of electrolyte do we have for these compounds. The first one, HClO, is an acid. It starts with hydrogen. But it is not belong to those six strong acids. So it is a weak acid and it will be a weak electrolyte. For second one, sodium hydroxide, it is a base, it's a strong base. But even if we don't know it's a base, we know that it is an ionic compound. And we can double check the solubility here. Hydroxide ions, they are mostly insoluble in water, except for alkali metal cations. Alkali metal cation is means group one, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. Group one of periodic table, hydroxide, they are always soluble. So because sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound, and so it is soluble, so it's a strong electrolyte. The next example is aluminum hydroxide. Again, it's a base, but if we check the solubility, we can see that aluminum is not belong to this exception. So hydroxide ion, they are insoluble except for these cations. And aluminum is not belong to them. So aluminum is insoluble, aluminum hydroxide. So because it's insoluble, it's a weak electrolyte. And the last example, it is methanol. It's an alcohol. It's a molecular compound. There is no ion in this molecule, and it is non-electrolyte. In addition of having different type of molecule, we are also able to find out which electrolyte is more stronger for soluble compound. Let's have one example for this type of problem. I would like to know if I have solution of sodium chloride, calcium chloride, aluminum nitrate, and sodium phosphate. If I have same amount of this compound, one mole for each of this compound in water, 
we would like to know which one is going to have more conductivity. All of these ionic compounds, they are soluble. So all of them, they are strong. But we would like to know which one is stronger. So here is how we can solve this type of problem. Sodium chloride, it has one cation and one anion. So in solution, we have sodium and chloride. So one mole of sodium chloride will produce one mole sodium and one mole chloride. Calcium chloride, calcium is positive too. And one mole calcium chloride will produce one mole calcium. But in the formula of calcium chloride, there are two chloride. So one mole calcium chloride will produce two mole of chloride. Here for aluminum nitrate, aluminum charge is positive three. When it dissociates in water solution, it produces one aluminum cation. And there are three of nitrate anion. And the last example, sodium phosphate. There are three sodium in this ionic compound. So when it dissolves in water, it produces three sodium cation and one phosphate anion. So for each of these compounds, we have one mole. It means same number of ionic formula. But when they dissolve in water, they will produce different number of ions. So sodium chloride produces two mole of ions. Calcium chloride will produce three mole of ions. Aluminum nitrate will produce four mole ions and sodium phosphate will produce four mole. So between these four, we can say that sodium chloride, it has lowest conductivity. And these two, they should have higher conductivity. Thank you for watching this video. For watching more video, please subscribe our YouTube channel.